In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about how we handle multi-threading in iPhone applications. We're going to be talking about three different topics. We're going to start off by talking about a special application called Instruments. We're then going to look at how we handle online files. And finally, I'm going to talk to you about how we handle simple multi-threading using Grand Central Dispatch. Instruments is a separate application that gets installed when you install Xcode on your computer. It's a powerful tool which allows you to track processes and examine the data that you've collected. The benefit of using instruments is you have a better understanding of how your application is performing on the device and on the simulator. I'm going to start by talking to you about two very handy tools that are built into Xcode itself. All we're really interested in is how the CPU is being used and how the memory is being allocated to your application. If you look at the left hand side of Xcode, the sixth tab is called the Debug Inspector. And in that, you can see that we have two entries. We have a CPU entry and we have a memory entry. And even just looking at the sidebar, you can see how much CPU is being used and also how much memory is being used on the device. If you select one of them, however, you get a more detailed screen. If we look at the CPU Inspector, you can see it breaks down the CPU usage, not only by application, but also by thread. And later on, when we start doing multi-threaded applications, it's very useful to have this screen open as you run the application on the simulator or on the phone. The memory inspector allows you to see how much memory is being used by the application over time. And this means you can track down things like memory leakage, where memory gets allocated and doesn't get freed up. And you can see in this example, I'm using about just under 6 meg, and the memory usage is pretty much consistent, which means I'm freeing up objects as I finish using them. Now, normally, we launch instruments from the inspector window. And as you can see, in the inspector window, there's a button which says Profile in Instruments. By clicking on this, you're going to launch instruments, and you're going to transfer the login to the instruments application, which gives you more detailed tools to analyze your code. By default, as you can see, the only, the only instrument installed is the time profiler. But instruments allows you to rack up different instruments and attach them to your running application. If you press Command L, it pops up a new window called the library. This contains a whole series of different instruments which you can add to your profile. And all you have to do is select the one you want, double click on it, and it gets added to the instruments rack. Now, Instruments is a very powerful tool for debugging your code, and this is really just scratching the surface of it. When you get into your iPhone development, you'll use Instruments more and more to test and debug your applications. The next thing I'm going to be talking to you about is how we handle online files. Now, in previous videos, I've talked to you about the application bundle, which allows you to bundle files when the application gets installed on the device. And I've also talked to you about the documents directory, where we can save and read files. However, when you run your application, most applications get their information initially from the internet, from online. I'm going to show you an example of where we retrieve images from the internet and store them locally on the device. Now, why is this useful? Well, if you think about your REST API, any images that are part of your API are going to be in the JSON data stored as URLs. So in this example, you can see I've got a thumbnail image stored in the JSON data. And obviously, if we load this into our application, we need to retrieve those images and display them somehow in the app. So the first thing we're going to look at is how we retrieve an image from the URL. And it's a multi-step process. The first thing we need to do is retrieve the URL from the data. And in the example that I've shown you, you can see we have an array of dictionaries. And once we've loaded it into Xcode, we're going to retrieve the book data as an NS dictionary. And obviously the URL would be object for key thumbnail. Once we have this image path as a string, we need to turn it into an NS URL, which is a correctly formed URL resource. And once we've done that, we create an NS data object, which allows us to retrieve all the data that's held at that particular URL. And the data object gets loaded into a UI image which can then get displayed in an image view. This will run work fine, but if you've got lots of images to retrieve, for example, to display in a table view, 
as you scroll up and down, it's going to have to keep retrieving new images and there's going to be a delay involved. So it'd be much better if as we retrieved each file, we stored it in the documents directory and then we can load it directly from our documents directory. And we're going to do that next. Now, to make things easy to understand, this SRC file variable is going to point to the online resource and the DST, the destination file, is going to be the location in the documents directory. Now, when we're saving files from URIs in the documents directory, we need to make sure that we're using a sensible naming scheme. And if you're retrieving images from a web service, it, it makes sense to use your record primary key as part of a file name because we must guarantee that every image we store is both unique and can be retrieved. So in the example I'm showing you, I'm going to make the file name equal to the, the ISBN number, and all the files are going to have a JPEG extension. Let's look at how we copy the file from an online location into our documents directory. Obviously, as we said before, the source path comes from your API. To find the destination path, we need to retrieve, a path, we need to retrieve the path to the documents directory and we then need to create a destination path by linking the documents directory with our file name that we've chosen. Once we've done that, we simply retrieve the image as before, we save the image as an NSData object, and then we simply call the write to file method and pass it the path to the documents directory and the file name. The third topic we're going to talk about is multi-threading. Apple's multi-threading is called Grand Central Dispatch and it optimizes application support for systems with multi-core processors. And it's based on a thread pool pattern, where we create a pool attached to a thread and we add items to the pool. A key concept for Grand Central Dispatch is the idea of a queue. We, the idea is that we create a named queue and we add jobs to those named queues. So to create a global queue, one that we can add anything to, we use a special function called dispatch get global queue we give it a priority and give it a queue number. And we now have a queue variable, which we can then use when we add jobs. Now, before we start adding jobs to our queue, we, we need to understand a very arcane feature of Objective-C called blocks. And blocks have a very weird syntax and they support a functional programming style. So here's an example of using a block. What we have here is a C function called dispatch async there are two parameters. The first parameter is our queue object, and the second parameter is a completion block. And the idea is it adds closure, it adds a closure mechanism to Objective C. All blocks start with a caret symbol, little sort of hat symbol. And what you basically have with blocks are anonymous functions in the same way you'd have them in JavaScript. And you can see from this one that our anonymous function our block returns nothing, returns void. Now blocks are used heavily in Objective-C when we cover the more advanced topics such as animation. If you're really interested in any advanced topic, I would encourage you to find out more because you can start to build your own blocks to help increase your productivity. So we've covered three topics in this video. The first one is we talked about instruments, which allows us to monitor and debug our code. We also talked about how we handle online files. And the third topic we covered was how to cover simple multi-threading using Grand Central Dispatch.